Okay, let's determine if this is a function. And here I have this word this. Okay, that's kind of ambiguous. What does this mean? Well, what I have here is a collection of points. I have uh, four, specifically these four um, ordered pair or coordinate xy points that we could plot on the xy coordinate uh, uh, plane. But here we have one, three, two, five, three, seven, and one, six. And the question is, again, is this a function? Does this represent a function? So uh, this particular um, video or this topic, this question is relevant to the kind of foundational concepts of a function. Hey, what is a function? Is something a function? This is critical uh, in mathematics, especially in algebra, because the uh, functions are everywhere. We have these, if you just look at the title of uh, some of the chapters that you're going to be studying, I don't know if you have had a chance to do so, but whatever course you might be, you'll see things like linear functions, quadratic functions, exponential functions. This word is thrown around, but it has very specific meaning to it, okay? And you really have to know a tremendous amount of functions. So I'm gonna highlight on uh, some of the basic concepts as we go through and answer this question. Just remember though, this word functions, because it's so popular or it's so huge in algebra, you just gotta just tell yourself, listen, this stuff is fun. Okay, look, that word fun is in the word function, so it must be fun, and I'm gonna try to make this as fun as possible, and we're gonna answer this question in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years, I've constructed what I'd like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different uh, math courses. I have all the main courses like pre-algebra, Algebra 1, uh, Geometry Algebra 2, College Algebra, uh, introductory Algebra. I have a ton of those type of courses. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here uh, shortly. That's taken me years to construct, but all my courses are extremely comprehensive. I just don't throw uh, a course together. I mean, it really, I, uh, I teach uh, to get people to truly master uh, the material, and that's a lot of hard work to do. Um, I also have a, a lot of courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for an exam like the GED, High Set Task, maybe the GRE, GMAT, uh, SAT, ACT, Alex, CLEP exam, um, Accuplacer, uh, maybe a teaching certification exam like the Praxis or a nursing entrance exam like the TEAS. Um, all those exams that I mentioned have a, a lot of mathematics on it. So you don't have to be in a math course to be looking to review math. So I have great test preparation uh, courses for those exams and many others. So you just go to my site and check out my full ca uh, course catalog. If I don't have what you are studying, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. Also do a lot of work with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program. And then obviously I help those of you are just struggling in your math class. Now, one thing that I can't do for you that you must do for yourself in order to be successful in math is note-taking, okay? Over decades of teaching mathematics, one thing is apparent to me, those students who take excellent notes, okay, will almost always do very, 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 very well in their math grades. And the reverse is true. Those students who are like, no, I don't need to take notes. I got a photographic memory. Or better yet, they got their best friend who takes great notes, which they kind of copy. Because listen, you know, math class is for what? Well, it's for checking your cell phone. It's to talking to uh, your best friends. All the things that I did way back in the good old 1980s. Listen, except for the cell phone. I wish I had a cell phone back then. But if I had a cell phone back in those days, I don't even know if I would graduate. It, uh, cell phones are awesome, but they're completely distracting. Okay, you got to have the discipline to put those things away because the secret to success in learning anything is focus, all right? And your teacher, when they're teaching, is giving you a lot of information. If you're not paying attention and writing that stuff down, you're just going to miss things, okay? I'm just telling you right now, uh, note-taking is critical, all right? So it's the one activity that will keep you focused and you'll get the information you need in your math class. But as you uh, improve in your note-taking, uh, right now you still need something to study from. So I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, and algebra 2 and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, so let's talk about this uh, particular problem. Now, I don't want to, uh, uh, it's impossible for me to go into in this one video, teach you everything about functions. But let's just do a quick review, 
okay, about uh, some really foundational stuff about functions here. So in mathematics, we have this big old thing called relations, okay? Relations. Now, what are relations? Well, relations effectively are just uh, collections of x, y points, little points like uh, 2, 3. I could plot this on an x, y coordinate plane. Here's x, and here's y. So I could plot 2, 3. It might be somewhere like right there. Okay, so uh, relations is, is nothing more than a point or collection of points. So um, we're really talking about this huge idea of points. Or uh, Now, there's different ways you can kind of uh, define relations in mathematics, but this is a good way to think about it. Now, some relations, some relations are functions, okay? So functions specifically are a subset of relations, okay? So uh, all functions, all functions are relations, but not all relations are functions, okay? You understand that? So what we're going to try to do is determine, hey, is this, in this particular problem, is uh, what we're looking at a relation or is it uh, a function, which is a type of relation, okay? Now, uh, again, the understanding of what a, the definition of what a function is, that's very, very critical. And I'm going to kind of highlight it a little bit um, in this particular problem, okay, uh, the, the definition of a function. But you're going to have to do more work on it if you're not quite sure uh, what a function is uh, and the definition of it. But you're in good hands because I have a ton of videos uh, on functions in my algebra uh, playlist on my channel. And, of course, I teach this thoroughly in my Algebra 1 or any of my Algebra courses. I really get into functions big time. Okay, so let's get to this problem, and we'll kind of answer a little bit about this definition of functions. Now, there's different ways you can answer this question, okay? But this is a typical problem in an algebra class. Now, one of the best ways, and you're going to need to know this, is uh, the uh, mapping, okay? Or I was going to say a mapping technique. But it looks like this. You kind of have like two ellipses like so, okay? Just two little circles or something like this. And the first is going to be our x's, and our second is going to be our y's. Let me show you how this works. So let's take the point 1, 3. Now, this is an x, y point, like x and y, right? So this thing is either a relation, okay? Well, it's definitely a relation. Let me just say that much. It is a relation for sure, okay? But we don't know yet if it's a function, a specific type of relation. So here's how this mapping works. So we're going to put our x values in this uh, little uh, uh, ellipse. So here we have 1, okay? And then our y values will go over here. So we have 3 right there. And you're going to draw an arrow from 1 to 3, okay? This number maps to this number. It says very specifically x maps to y. And this represents the coordinate 1, 3, okay? So let's do this for each point, And then I'll explain to you how we determine uh, if this is a function or not. Okay, so 2 is going to go to 5. So 2, we put a 2 here. Okay, then we'll put a 5 here. So 2 maps to 5. Okay. And then we got 3, 7. So 3 maps to 7. Okay, so far so good. But here, we have a situation here. We got 1 mapping to 6. So we're going to have 6 over here in terms of our y value. But 1, we already have. It's right there. Okay, so the question is, do I go like one maps to six? No, you don't write it that way, okay, because we already have one. So one is uh, mapping to three, okay, as this one uh, indicated, this point, and one is also mapping to six. So it's going to look like this. So when I um, construct a mapping diagram, this is the way it looks like, okay? It's going to look like uh, this. So there's a, a value that's showing up again, like one, or any one of these x or y's, you just can't, you don't write a duplicate of it. You just keep that uh, one value, and then you just draw multiple arrows going from there. So uh, right here, right off the bat, you need to be able to read a, ma a mapping diagram, okay? And the answer to uh, the question whether this is a function or not is no, it is not a function. Now, why is that? Well, it has something to do with this one, uh, going to 3 and 6. So uh, functions you can kind of define in a lot of different kind of ways, okay? But let's talk about um, how we would think about a function in terms of a mapping diagram. Okay, so a function is the following. 
uh, every x, every these are like our input values, can point to one and only one output value. So uh, that you can kind of interpret that as this. Every x value can only point to one y value. So you can see this one is going to two y values. It's trying to go to three and it's trying to go to six. It's like, hey, you got to make up your mind, okay? So this would be like a function. I don't know if you're familiar with this notation, f of x, okay, is equal to whatever the case is, some sort of function rule. But I'm like, okay, uh, I'm going to plug in f of one, okay? That's the same thing as doing this. Sometimes I get three, and then if I plug in f of one again, sometimes I get six. It's like, hmm, that's kind of confusing. Another way to kind of think of a function is the following. You can have like a little function machine, and we throw these x values into it, and we get these y values out. And so if I'm like, okay, if I'm going to throw a 1, I'm going to let x is equal to 1. I'm going to throw it into my function machine. And what pops out? Well, here, uh, a 3 popped out. Okay, then I'm going to throw another 1 back in, and now a 6 pops out. That is not a function. Okay, a function is... Uh, every x gets mapped, okay, is only going to produce one unique output uh, value, one and only one, okay? So that's the big thing you need to remember here. So when you look at a mapping diagram, if you have any x going to two or more y's, that's not a function. Now, uh, let's kind of do something here, kind of, uh, kind of shake things up a little bit. Let's make up another little mapping. What if I had the following? Um, let's see here. Uh, I want you to tell me if this is a function or not. Okay. Okay. So what do you think? Is this a function, yes or no? Now, some of you might be saying, mm, no, it's not, because look, you got two arrows going to the same number. No, that's not the case. This is, in fact, a, a function. This, the answer to this is yes, this is a function. So one is going to only three. Okay, that's okay. This is fine. And two is going to only three. So the question is this. Can um, uh, a, another x value point to the same y value? Yes, you, uh, that's okay. Okay. Uh, the whole idea is that every x value can only go to one and only one y value, and that's what's critical. So this is how you uh, can determine when you have uh, a set of order pairs like this uh, to whether something is a function or not. It's a great technique. you got to understand mapping, and oftentimes you won't uh, be given a collection of points like this. You'll just be given a mapping diagram, and you got to determine whether uh, that represents a function or not. And by the way, uh, just a little bit more information. All these numbers here, if this is our entire um, uh, function. This would be the domain of the function, and this would be the range of the function. But I can go on and on and on uh, and teach about functions because they're just so much fun. Okay. Again, functions, functions. You kind of get it, and you're probably saying, "Boy, stick to teaching math because your humor, your comedy is not that good." Well, listen, I try. I do whatever it takes to get you to be excited about learning math. That's my mission. Okay. But if you're able to kind of understand this problem, then look, you're on you're on your way to understand about functions and if you want to end up with a happy face at the end of your math class you better understand functions okay but you're in good hands okay it's all up to you these days no one should be failing math okay if you're struggling in math uh, there's so many resources uh, for you one you got to be doing the work right no one could do that work for you like note-taking but two if you're uh, struggling in your math class, there's so much uh, video free stuff out there like my channel. You know, if you like my teaching style, I literally have a thousand plus videos there for you. But again, my best resources will be in my uh, math courses. All right. So functions, completely, hugely important uh, in your studies of mathematics. So make sure you, uh, you know, do more than just watch this video. Practice this stuff. Follow on. You know, ask yourself, do I really understand this? Because if you're shaky on it, you need to follow through and do more work. Okay. But if you do understand this video, then, you know, that's a good start. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.